Welcome to a Women's Brew, where women talk about beer. Today, we're following the hottest podcast trend out there and putting our episode in the hands of our AI overlords. We apologise in advance. I'm Joanne, and this is Tori. Hello. And we're two beer-loving women on a mission to get more people drinking and talking about great beer. Come join us. Um, I want to preface that and say that Tori apologises in advance because this was all her. I am coming into this blind and I have absolutely no idea what's happening. (laughs) And this is why it's going to make... Probably I'm going to laugh more than anything else because I know what is coming. And we couldn't... I mean, AI is hot right now, isn't it? Is the hot the new hotness. Uh, The new hotness (laughs) in in everything, not just beer. So I think let's just... Let's jump into our episode. I'm okay. let's let's reopen this thing. Okay. <laughs> let me get let me get with the our, I have I have I have given us the perfect I mean I haven't given us this. Um Bing's chat GPT has given us a our brand new opening. We're we're gonna rebrand it. So let's let's go into our new intro and see okay. how it is. Okay. Right. Uh Oh god, this is weird. I don't normally do the intros. Yeah, I know you're, <laughs> not, you're number one. You're host number one. <laughs> I'm host Lucy. Number one. <laughs> Hello and welcome to Brew Babes, the podcast where we chat all about all things craft beer and have a laugh along the way. I'm Lucy, and with me, as always, is my best mate and co-host Gemma. <laughs> Hello, everyone. Thanks for tuning in. We've got a smashing show for you today. We're going to talk about some of the funniest and weirdest things we've seen or heard in the craft beer world. Share our opinions on some of the beers we've been drinking lately and tell you some of our favourite beer jokes. That's right, we love having a giggle, especially (laughs) when it involves beer. You can get in touch with us via email, Twitter, Instagram or Facebook. That's accurate. That's accurate. Uh, just, just search for Brew Babes podcast and drop us a line. That don't is not accurate. That. Don't do that. <laughs> so, Lucy, what have you been drinking this week? Well, Gemma, I've been, <laughs> I've been trying some of the beers from Lake Down Brewing Co., a new microbrewery and tap room in East Sussex that makes some amazing beers. They were kind enough to send us a mixed case of their beers to try out. Were they? Oh. Yeah, oh yes they, they were I, I remember that they were brilliant which ones did you like best i really liked their american red which was very hoppy and fruity with a nice balance of malt and bitterness it had a lovely amber color and a smooth finish i also love their pilsner which was crisp and refreshing with a floral aroma and a dry finish mm. i agree those were both excellent beers I also enjoyed their IPA, which is very citrusy and piney, with a strong hop flavour and aroma. It was very punchy and flavourful. And their stout, which was dark and roasty, with notes of coffee, chocolate and licorice. It was very satisfying and warming. Yes, those were great too. Lake Down Brew and Co. really know how to make quality beers with character and style. They are one of our favourite breweries at the moment. Absolutely. If you haven't tried their beers yet, we highly recommend them. You can order them online from their website or find them in selected pubs and shops across the UK. So, moving on to some of the funniest and weirdest things we've ever seen or heard of in the craft beer world. What have you noticed lately, Gemma? Well, Lucy, one thing that made me laugh was the recent news that Hofmeister, the bland fizzy lager from the 1980s, is to be relaunched as a craft beer. Really? That's hilarious. Is it? Hoff- Hoffmeister was one of the worst beers ever made. Oh, wow. It was so weak and watery that it tasted like nothing. I know. It was advertised by a man dressed as a dancing bear who said, follow the bear, more like follow the drain. Oh my God. Ha ha ha! Good one! <laughs> so how are they going to make it into a craft beer? <laughs> well, apparently... They're going to use British malts and Bavarian hops to make it more flavourful and stronger. They're oh. also going to change the name from Hofmeister to Hofmeister Hells. Hells? For like hell no. Ha ha ha, exactly. I don't think anyone is going to buy this new version of Hofmeister. It's like putting lipstick on a pig. Yeah, it's still a pig. Yeah, it's still Hofmeister. 
it's so bad yeah it's, bad. it's still rubbish <laughs> yeah okay let's move on to something else before we get sued by Hofmeister good idea what else have you got for us oh my god what is this this is oh my goodness it is so... <laughs> I think we should just take out everything in the beginning <laughs> Until after our intro, and then go straight into this. It just oh my like, god, no! It is so honestly. So uh, immediately, I messaged you earlier about this beforehand yes. as well because there's that whole thing like it's like putting lipstick on a pig, and I absolutely hate that joke. Like it's not for me. It's very clear I haven't written that, yeah. um, and it it, I, it just gives me the ick when I like see that joke. But then I was also like, it's not about a person. It's about some. I'm guessing fictitious. Oh, it's Ho- no, Hofmeister is an actual it's beer. Is Hofmeister an it's, actual it's beer? It's actually not terrible. I had it, it before is it Christmas. Fizzy, is it a bland fizzy lager from the 1980s? I mean, it is a lager. Um, oh, I might have had their pills in there. But no, it was. I mean, it was fine. Like, Did they actually have a bear? Yes, yeah, the, the logo Follow for the it bear. is a bear. That is amazing. Because I just, it was all being written and I was reading it having no idea. And then it was like, follow the, you know, it had a, yeah. it had a bear. <laughs> and it said, follow the bear. <laughs> and then that made me chuckle because I was like, that, I'm confused. Um, now I'm curious. Lake Down Brewery. I was going to say, it's Lake Co. Down Brewery, an out. actual brewery. Let's find out right now. <laughs> and is there, <laughs> is there stout <laughs> warming with coffee and roasty flavours? Is it a real brewery? Lake Town Brewing Company, real brewery. Wow. <laughs> Located they did not send us a box of beer. They did not send us a box of beer, but I think we should give them a shout out anyways. <laughs> five stars. They've got three Google reviews, five oh. stars. Um, now I'm kind of curious what their beers are. <laughs> Could enter now. Have they got uh, a hoppy red They do have a Pilsner. You really they have enjoyed a Pilsner. it. <laughs> I did. They have a Pilsner, an American Pale, a Nipa, a Vermont Pale, a Best Bitter, an American Red, an English Pale, a Pacific Rye, something called Pacific Rye. I think they've just got a core range that has a bunch of them. So mm. um, they do have that. And I mean, I giggled so much to myself as an inside joke when it was like, I, I also enjoyed their IPA. I was like, <laughs> amazing. Yeah, they're like, no, that's that's not how that conversation would go. It's not well, at so all. I take I do take umbrage <sighs> against the name Brew Babes. Like uh, really yeah, so Really, that's the best you could so, come up with. What was uh, the prompt that you put in? So actually that w- that was like the last out of a massive series okay. of things that I put in. I don't remember what I put in the prompt for this because I wrote it in like a whole bunch of different ways and okay. it was all pretty much like could you write a podcast? It was either like write a interesting podcast script or a funny podcast script or whatever and it was mostly like a british craft beer uh podcast with two female hosts like like that kind of stuff or like uh with two like or a podcast with female hosts or stuff like that there wasn't anything like wild or any like i didn't put anything to kind of force it down a path to say that um it was interesting because there was lots of iterations of it there was like it wasn't just like brew babes there was a few others i think i've actually still got them saved one was called welcome to chugging with clarity so it was chugging with clarity was the podcast so this was like these are the few different things that we could have been oh the intro of the other one was welcome to chugging with clarity the podcast with two friends leah and phoebe bring your craft beer news events and industry info with a comedic spin so that was one of them okay um there was let's brew it and hop to it <laughs> two different ones and i was like okay great <laughs> um there was like they like it depends on how i was doing it it's yeah. like it would generate me one and then i'd be like i don't love everything about this one it's a bit like vanilla let's go to another one sort yeah. of thing um and this was the one i ended up with because it just made me laugh the most because the most ridiculous because some of them were like quite normal but normal in the sense that it was like on this episode we're gonna talk about home brewing and it was like actual educated stuff okay. but i just wanted to prompt me some like something that was a bit silly yeah um what i noticed across all the chat bots was actually the bing chat gpt was one of the coolest because you could write something so this is what made me chuckle is you could write something yeah and then i would go um it like it will give you 
the episode and then it would say um you know what how do you want to do this do you want to make it so uh, the prompt i gave was like a british craft beer podcast hosted by two women like um uh, a funny british craft beer podcast mm-hmm. whatever so then it would come back that would say um do you want to make this more british and i was like D-, like here were things they could do like it like yes this is perfect no make it more british no make it funnier make it okay. this and i was like make it more british and it went from just being like hey so and so to being like I'm here with my mate. We're going to have a natter about <laughs> oh beer. And then I started crying. Like, I was then laughing and I was telling Rick and he's like, too British, too <laughs> British. <laughs> go back, go back. You've gone too far. Amazing. So yeah, this is pretty much me laughing to myself all afternoon, <laughs> coming up with these to try to find one that I was like, that's the one. And I just ended with this one because I was like, this is the one, I think. Like, it's an easy enough conversation. But yeah, I guess I thought today would be just fun. We could, you know, drink what we had in our fridge and we could just have a little bit of fun with the chat bots. So I guess before we get into it, we've got some things randomly generated we can talk about and, and all that yeah. good stuff. And, and if this goes down fun, we can maybe do another one later with other things. Who knows? But <laughs> before we start, what are you drinking? Um, I'm currently drinking Key Lime Pie from Great Notion. Um it's lovely it is a tart ale with key lime and natural flavors it's got lactose in it um it tastes and smells like um lime cordial with like some nice kind of pie crust chucked in there it's lovely Mm. what are you drinking i have a one liter growler filled of vault city's overnight oats so i'm having that yeah it's just nice it smells really like coffee and like a dark berry and then it just tastes the tartness is quite nice because it's um for me it's noticeable but it's a lower level so like this is one i could easily be like try this to a a newbie and then they'd be like oh my god that's tart and i'd be like oh it just tastes like low level tart (laughs) right because like we discussed this before we think we've hit a point where we're like oh that's good for newbies yeah like i don't feel like this is very tart but it probably is if you if you're not a sour drinker person Mm. i feel like this is a nice level of tart yeah but yeah that's that's what i'm drinking um what you know do you have any experience have you played around with any chatbots or any dally um, or any like that i used i i have a program called writer r y r y t uh y r i think that's how it's spelled um and that kind of came out before like chat gtp got really big and stuff and i used to use it to um help me generate captions and things um it wasn't amazing I haven't used it in a little bit. Um, I was thinking the other day I need to go back and try it and see if it's kind of learnt a bit more. Um, yeah, so I've used that. Um, I've not used any of the other ones that are hot at the moment, though. I know there's a bit of, like, a taboo around it as well because it's, like, having all this, it's going to be, like, replace it. It's, it's eventually going to hit a point where it could just replace somebody's job to a degree. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I think that there's it's too early to kind of go through the whole you know, what's the problem what's the not and I think this is just meant I'm just pinning it out there as like this is just meant to be a bit of fun like uh, we understand yeah. that there's concerns yeah, yeah. with the chat bots this was just a bit of fun um, it's think... funny I built a chat bot today and my co-worker was like telling me to use my, who's an engineer that writes scripts was like use chat GPT to write your script for this and I was like Oh, my Python scripts, and I was like, oh, and it worked. <laughs> but I mean, there are there are practical applications where it's it's going to be useful, but there still needs to be like human input somewhere. Like it's like when we were doing the um, Fuller's Vintage Ale episode, and they've you know they've automated a bunch of their uh, cask line, um, but they found that you know robots can't put the keystone in properly so this Mm -hmm. you know there are certain things where you still need that human input and i think while we while everyone's experimenting with these things we're going to come to the point where we're like okay well it can do this but we still need this kind of human input and this human eye over it and like that script it was fine like it wasn't great like we need to go in and edit and put in the bits (laughs) 
and yeah. improve it and you know and tweak it like even it's with been really, you've got it for writing things you still need to go in and put that kind of personal touch on it yeah so i mean we used it the other day we at work we had a hack day and we were trying to put something somebody was trying to put something together and uh to get the base like a base level of information for things um we used like a chatbot and it literally was used for the sole purpose of doing something really basic to take that time and effort away from somebody else yeah. to have to do it they still had to like read over what came up with it they still had to make sure it worked and it's the same thing with like writing scripts like if somebody has a like you know a what i mean script i mean like actual coding yeah like, stuff um somebody still has to make sure that that it's working and that things are inputted in the right spots and all that so um there are still at, at least for the foreseeable i mean you'll still need people to do things there right. and, and proofread and spell you know proof things to make sure it's not just pulling the wrong information so what because obviously it learns from yeah repeatable searches and you know repeat like conversations happening like repeatedly and what was really interesting actually before we get into like the actual fun stuff um so originally when i had the idea to do this i used i think it was chat gpt to come up i, I was just typing in random like topics for podcasts and i think i did just to see like what different things would come up i think i did like um topics for uh women's craft beer podcast or a, po a craft beer podcast hosted by women and it was coming up with like these things that were like the topics were all like beer in your health and how to stay fit while drinking beer and wow. um beer as spa products and like more like gossipy health and beauty fitness like those kind you know, of like props that's all that women want right yeah it was and, like low fat beers and stuff wow. like that it was just the chatbots really... the chatbots have got misogyny going on like well it's not the chatbots though is it the chatbots are relying on what else on is what out information there. they're pulling so doesn't that show how much misogyny is out there yeah so it was wow. really quite interesting because that was kind of the, that was the immediate first pass that had happened like a few weeks ago when i was yeah. just like having fun playing around and inputting things and the men's one was it i wouldn't say it was necessarily like hyper masculine in comparison i think yeah. there was a level of like a little bit of some more like laddish somewhat toxic masculine like the prompts themselves weren't bad but the conversations that you'd potentially have off the back end of those prompts could lead into a bit of like lad culture toxic masculinity okay. with the wrong audience yeah um but then also a lot of it was just like normal things that like we've talked about and so like that's what i think is really interesting um but that was like immediate first pass and then obviously i've had more conversations with it i've had it searched for different things that's obviously you know this was i think when i looked it up it was before it was a few weeks ago and it might have been before international women's day when maybe there was obviously a lot more that's coming out from international women's collaboration brew day although saying that chat gpt does run like it only had so much history okay. uploaded into it there's a cut off date for when the it stopped having information input mm -hmm. into it in that way but it's always learning it's always growing and you know that's great and again it's not the chatbot that's pulling this it's what it's pulling from the internet and so yeah. i found that really really fascinating really interesting and through having more conversations with it and looking at different chatbots um what ended up coming up slowly as i asked it the same question again a few weeks later it became a lot more what was really funny is it became a lot more feminist in its responses oh. that was like instead it was still for me it was still frustrating in in a way and i wonder what your response here is going to be not that i'm anti-feminist content but also it was still at a point where it was like i was like some topics that are good for women like for a craft beer podcast hosted by women that is all i did was just say yeah. it was two female hosts and it was coming up with like a podcast to talk about all things women celebrate women in beer and all this which was really great like that is a thing we do it's a thing we love to do yeah. in anyways um but i still found it really interesting because it almost went the exact opposite way where it went extreme hardcore like feminist and celebrating you know women specifically and all that which i love but yeah. you then still ask for a men's podcast and it would be like talk about homebrewing talk about the history of beer talk about this talk about that right 
And for me, I kind of was like, I want to get to a point where I just ask it to give me content for a craft beer podcast, whether it's hosted by women, hosted by men, yeah. hosted by non-binary, hosted by animals, hosted by aliens, whatever. And it would still come up with the same type of interesting content, if yeah. that makes sense. Yeah. Like a selection like, of all about? of those things, rather than just like, oh, it's women, so they're going to talk about these things. It's men, so they're going to talk about this. Like, it should be like a homogenous mix of all of it yeah like in my mind i i would love it if it was just like regard like i didn't see the men suggestions being told talk about um diversity in brewing right it was like the women's suggestion the the female host suggestion would be like talk about diversity in brewing and talk about this which is great like we do it we love yeah, to do it we're it's gonna not do a that problem. <laughs> we're gonna continue to do that like it's great um, but it would have been nice if that was the similar answers that would come up with the good yeah. conversation for like a male hosted podcast to talk yeah. about. So um, I feel like this just knowing it's not the tech is just a tool to analyze sort of the data that's out there. Yeah. And it does make me feel like the data leads me to believe um, that there's some more work to do. Yeah. In society, for sure. Yeah, like we, we already know that. that. Already. It's not a surprise. <laughs> um, but also, it it was only you know through having those conversations, it did sort of evolve and become a little bit more fair. So that is, I think, the heavy stuff out of the way. <laughs> Should we go into uh, some random prompts? I've got sure. a whole massive list of random prompts and talking points that I thought I'll just. I've created a bot because I didn't want to be simple. I wanted to be extra. Of course. Um, I wanted to be extra. And no basic OCD. bitches around here. No basic bitches around here. I thought I Apart would. Pumpkin spice season. Re... And even then, you know, basic just means that you are normal, really. Um, <laughs> so I thought I'd go above and beyond. I would try to learn Python, fail to learn Python, and then ask an AI bot to teach me python or write my script for me <laughs> and create a bot that would give me uh the number of what i'm looking for so i will pick a number i will read out that prompt and then we can talk about it and talk if it's maybe something we've done before if we know people are talking about it do we think it's a good thing like a good prompt or a shit one so let me get on this i need to actually get my script for my bot running two seconds <laughs> Because this is what I this is what I do now. I make bots. Cool, bot is ready. And hopefully, I'm gonna do my backslash roll. Cool, randomly generated topic number thirty, which is the fun and creativity of craft beer. How to make your own craft beer recipes, cocktails, crafts, and more. Oh. I feel like we've partially covered this. I think so. Personally. Um, we've done the craft beer cocktail angle to a degree. Yeah. We've, we've got some more that we can continue doing. Yeah. Um, crafts. I think crafts would be quite interesting. What are your thoughts? Like, do you think that is a... Like things you can make with... Cans? Like cans and things. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I don't, I don't really know what other crafts there are. Like, I was reading that. I was like, what other crafts are there? <laughs> I mean, I've seen people that um, make jewellery uh, mm. out of labels and and bottle caps and stuff um yeah, i've seen see. someone that takes like the six pack packaging and makes it into like wallets and bags like the car like if you've got a cardboard yeah or, like, i think rings those plastic the rings. like yeah like the cardboard carriers they're specifically american so you know, it's the printed yeah, okay. ones um i think they they must like laminate them or something somehow to make them there's because they make like wallets and things out of them and i don't think it's just the cardboard like i feel like there's they're doing something to it to make it last a bit longer yeah that was interesting um mm. you know love me a bar top that's made out of bottle caps yeah i do like i do like that as well um i've been saving a bunch of bottle yeah. tops because i was like i've got a haribo sweet tub down down here in one of my shelves in in the studio which is just full it's overflowing with beer caps because you know i'm keeping them all for Love that it. you know resin project when i get to it one day 
<laughs> don't you feel like we all have that like resin right. project that we're like project. oh we'll just do like a resin thing like it's no big deal and then actually we all just hoard these things yeah <laughs> then we never get around yeah. to the resin I've got, project. like i've got a stack of pieces of paper with labels stuck on them just for that day that i'm going to use them for something i have in that side of the room you can't really see it at the moment it's a mess that's why i'm not going to angle my camera over there um but it's about like that thick of oh, paper now that. that has all the label at least i was gonna say it's yeah. it's it's chunky yeah of yeah. all the papers that have labels and that's just the ones that are my first off i have a whole second pile where it's yeah. like the second or third time that i've bought a beer and i'm like oh those are i can use those for extra projects because it's yeah. less risky because i've got a backup yeah i did make a belt with Ooh. bottle caps on well that's cool um so i folded out the sides and then i How attached do do them uh pliers oh, and so okay. i just folded it out and that's so you've got like a little bit of a flat bit Have you ever seen um like asian clothing where it's got the mirror sewn on so they do like an embroidery around the outside and it keeps like little mirror discs attached to clothing potentially um that's there's a, like there's a particular way of stitching it so it holds it in place um and i did that around beer caps on a belt it's massive though so i don't really wear it but yeah i've got some some of my favorite beer caps are one piece of recycled denim that i made into a belt i have done a resin project in the sense of i have put a bar mat so i got a coaster resin thing i was just playing around trying to figure out what would work what wouldn't and i put a coaster i've got it right here hang on i'll go get it i'll show you I'll show you my art project <laughs> yeah i've made a coaster yeah. so i got a i had my niece was doing resin projects just trying to figure out if it was a way to make some money and all that yeah. so she bought all these resin things and i thought i'll give it a go it'll be fun um and i had a square one that i had a perfectly square size coaster and if you're watching the video it's a siren coaster so i basically played around with a broken dream coaster put some sparkles put some in glitter there. in it some glitter in there yeah it used some to be things. sticky for the longest time and i actually was quite impressed with myself yeah that's it. good because I think the colours worked really well yeah. and the sizing worked really well. So yeah, that was my little project. I've bought candles. Um, oh yeah, I've seen people make candles out of old cans and things. I tried doing it once and it worked out fine, but then I think I made a mess with the wax and it was a pain in the butt to clean up, so then I never yeah. did it again. <laughs> Got rid of all the cans I was saving for that. <laughs> um, yeah, crafts. Would you would you listen to like a whole episode on craft? Like I feel like it would be hard to fill a whole episode with craft. I think it'd be hard. Yeah, I think it would be hard to fill a whole episode. And I feel then you've got to watch the video mm. because you need to see, like if you're like you know trying things out and stuff. People need to watch that, but otherwise you've got to be very specific in your instructions. That's it. I guess you probably how to do it you probably could fill a whole episode but it'd be hard as individuals who aren't mm. doing all these different things so i guess we could make a video yeah. on us trying and at least like somewhat doing it somewhat failing but then you're right it would be very video heavy i think yeah so yeah maybe something for us to get into let's see <laughs> cool let's roll another topic oh here we go the best craft beer destinations in the uk and abroad where to find the most exciting exciting breweries pubs and festivals we've definitely talked about this i feel like we've definitely talked about this i mean there's always I feel like more we've to talk about, about all of it yeah there is definitely yeah um maybe we're going to be talking more about festivals soon i don't think we touched upon pubs as much but do you think anyone does it does is there anyone you could think of that talks about pubs specifically um pub trotters oh yeah pub trotters yeah. you were on pub trotters at I one was. point weren't you yeah they specifically talk about pubs um i feel like there is a podcast where i can't think which one now but i feel like there's one where they talk about oh doesn't um i think this week in craft beer mm. talks about specific spots when they do their podcast i think we we've talked about them in the sense of like when it comes into like the travel then yeah it's, it we definitely mentioned it um would be 
interesting to kind of highlight more craft beer pubs. Yeah. Um, we were it's very field. subjective, though, as well, isn't it? About, like, what kind of pubs you feel comfortable mm. in and what things you want. I mean, maybe that's maybe that's a topic we need to talk about. Like, what do we enjoy out of a pub? And, um, you know, what places have we been to that embody that for us? That's it. So, so when we were in Sheffield, I mm. took Rick into a few places. And, like, what I found with Sheffield that was really interesting in all the times we've been there compared to other places that I've gone for craft beer is you can go into a place that from the outside looks like a traditional pub or looks like some place that if you didn't know any better you might be like oh I don't know how comfortable I'd feel in here I don't know if I'll be able to find something I want to drink in here or whatever if you didn't do any research you didn't know anything about it you might not stop and go in if you were looking specifically for yeah. craft beer but then they have the most killer lineup of like craft beer, both UK and European and US craft beers, like global craft beers that yeah. are amazing. Um, but from the outside, they look like such a traditional craft, like a traditional pub. And like I took when Rick went in, he was like, "It looks like a normal pub, but it's it's not." And I was like, "No, <laughs> it is not." Um, yeah, that that would make an interesting topic, I think. Let's let's roll. Add that to our that. list. Yeah, and get a hold of us. Make a note about that. <laughs> get a hold of us, listeners, and let us know your favourite craft beer pubs, as opposed to chat rooms. Yes. We want to talk about pubs. Yeah, and we could probably go visit some. That would be mm. a fun episode. Going and visiting a few different recommendations and seeing how we get on there. Um, and I'm sure, like I said, we're going to be talking about festivals soon enough. Yeah, the um, season is going to soon be upon us. <laughs> yeah, and more travel to be done. I've got an impending holiday coming up that. I'm <laughs> trying to book right now that's going to be exciting uh next one <laughs> so this is really <laughs> interesting this one came up the benefits and challenges of using rice in brewing and how Ooh. japanese rice lagers achieve a dry and clean finish this one that is an interesting topic so we've not talked about this i'm yeah. sure there's probably been loads of people yeah. that have um what's interesting about this one is this was generated using um bing's chat gpt mm -hmm. and they also for some of these suggestions give links oh and that's pretty cool so i've got a whole link here to go and reference about yeah the brewing process of making japanese lagers rice nice lagers. so that is like we could definitely I we think can definitely do that one I feel like recently there's been a few um that have put yeah, out yeah rice there's been lagers. a few uh tartarus i've still got tartarus, tartarus. rice lager J japanese rice lager Ooh. i haven't drunk yet so <laughs> i'm sorry i've opened my growler and it's just gone like <laughs> in my face just interrupting me so sorry rude. it's my face going... um yeah i don't still have my tartar did you drink it? it like so it. quick i mean i, I still have get another one yeah i still have that Maybe. we can have a look at some japanese rice lagers i think that'd be fun yeah that would be super fun and if this holiday pans out it would be even more fun <laughs> so yeah i mean that's a pretty straightforward bring one. some uh, classic examples home maybe maybe we'll see <laughs> if, if this pans out as it should and it's <laughs> planned to we will we will see um but yeah there's not too much more complication to that it's pretty straightforward that one yeah i like that one right next one we have the future of craft beer oh and that's, that's this is giving a me a blurb one exactly this is giving me a blurb that says uh so this is how different just like supermarkets the different chatbots are very different on how they give you mm. feedback so so some of them have given me a topic and given me a link to go with that topic some of them have just given me a quick high level sentence and some of them have given me the topic and then a blurb so this one's got a blurb and this one says okay. speculate about what the future holds for the craft beer industry from new brewing techniques and flavor profiles to changing consumer trends and emerging markets you can also discuss the challenges that craft brewers face such as competition from big beer companies and the need to stay innovative and relevant in the crowded market. Now, I feel like, from my viewpoint, is this topic with that prompt anyways, I feel like we'd have to talk about that with a brewer. or Yeah, a 100%. Owner. 
like we will have a viewpoint uh, from the things that we've seen but to get a true understanding of that you need to talk to someone that is working in the industry that is facing those issues and give their viewpoint like probably like a couple of different brewers of different sizes mm. um at different points in the you know in the life cycle of their brewery like a newer brewery an older brewery to see where they're you know where they're sitting because there's going to be a, a variation on people's thoughts on that yeah no i agree um i think i would thumbs up that in the sense of i think mm. that is actually compared to some of the other ones i feel like that would be a lot more interesting to hear about and you could almost do either a mini series or like if you were gonna format how you do interviews like that could be a question that, although i think it's kind of i always hesitate to ask those type of questions because nobody's really a fortune teller and it's exactly like, right. you said, like oh that's really hard so maybe not so much about the future in that sense but i think it'd be really interesting to discuss the challenges at the time anyways because i think so many people just think like you turn up you make a beer and you just you're talented you just make it it's exactly how you intended and people either like it or dislike it they don't really understand yeah the whole end-to-end process and i feel like to really appreciate what you're drinking and even more so if it doesn't meet your taste palette like the challenge it takes from start to finish to get a beer made is really important for someone to really understand to have that appreciation yeah i think there are a lot of people out there that just like, oh it's just just making beer like i think i why think why can't you just make it thicker just make it thicker just, just like do i this, don't just do make it thinner <laughs> i think this but i think this is a a thing that is widespread in in the arts like brewing is an art it's a it's a craft like and even like in you know in other artistic and craft endeavors like I used to hear it when I was a sec- when I was a secondary school teacher in design technology. Oh, it's just a bit of sewing. It's just a bit of woodwork. Like, oh, you're just hitting wood with a hammer. Oh, it's just a bit of cooking. Like, who's turning around to like Hessen Blumenthal and being like, oh, it's just a bit of cooking, mate. Like, nobody. But you know, this is, you know, there are, there are a lot of, oh, we'll just do it like this. Like, if you're not the person that's doing it, it's easy for you to turn around and be like, we'll just do this. Actually, there's a lot of things that go into these these products and there's a whole thing behind it before you it gets to your glass so having a little bit of an understanding about that is very useful yeah i think for me as well like i'd really be interested to hear from people talking about the competition side of things like about yeah. the how competitive the market is and like what what they have to do to adapt and adjust to that competitive market not in a sense of like because i think there is a lot of camaraderie in craft beer like it's not a competition in the sense of like pitting people against each other and like in that way i would just want to hear about it from the like how does that competition impact you in the decisions that you have to make like what kind of decisions do you have to stop and take is it something like i'd love to hear stories about like we really wanted to make this but looking at how much it cost and the people that also buy similar beers, like who who are our, our target audience buying beers yeah. from? Do they do something like this? Is this too risky? Like hearing that side of things, I feel like could be really, really interesting. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, let's roll at least one more prompt. Right. This is like, I feel like this is too easy. So this one's craft beer and food pairings. And the blurb for it is share tips and tricks for pairing craft beer with different types of food from spicy dishes to rich desserts. You can also discuss the rise of beer centric restaurants and the growth of popularity of beer dinners and food festivals. So I think we, I feel like that's another one that is like, we've kind of definitely touched on it. Yeah, we've touched on it. There's so much more that you can do but i also feel like that's one that's like a how long's a piece of string right like there's always more you can talk about with it because there's more pairings you can make and and you know everyone's palettes are different like you like different things i was having um on saturday having some cheese and crackers having a bit of lovely blue cheese and i was just like you know what i personally haven't found a beer that i enjoy with blue cheese yet like there's one out there i know there's a bit but you know 
the classic examples of have an imperial stout with it have a have a barley wine like yes yeah, good but it doesn't make me go oh this is so yummy like this is great i'm still trying to find the beer that i would really pair with a blue with it like a really lovely blue cheese and so it's it's an ongoing thing and i feel like that would be different for like other people as so, like yeah. other people might go i found the thing that for me pairs perfectly with a blue cheese yeah and when i have anything else with it it just doesn't yeah feel right like barley wine is the epi- like it's like barley wine and a blue cheese this is it and i'm like not for me <laughs> Like it's, it's like it tastes good, but I'm not like blown away by it. So I'm still looking for what I, what my taste buds are going. Yes, this is the pairing. I if I got an exam, like, but if uh, I've got Cicero in the exam, I'm gonna say blue cheese and barley wine. For me, it's like always a no. It's like yeah, it's always oh, a no for you. <laughs> like always a no for me. And I'm blue like, cheese is like give mm-hmm. it to me. I, you... you know what? I'm still dreaming about the. We had a really lovely creamy yorkshire blue cheese when we were in sheffield and i'm like oh so good <laughs> dream about that did you cheese. do you like hold back beers speci- like are there any beers that you've got at the moment that you're like i'm waiting to pair this with something or like a certain type of beer that you're like i almost can't drink this unless i'm pairing it with stuff mm, not necessarily um i tend to like have a thing where i'm like oh i think i'm gonna pair something with food let me let me see what i've got i kind of do it that way around um i do so wink wink we all know that family member that buys us the uh you know classic british real ales box for christmas you like beers oh, you like beer Here you go. Real ale. Right. <laughs> that <laughs> some of those are, some of those are lovely like not dissing the real ale i enjoy a beautiful real ale but um, often those kind of sit around and then I'm like, mm, I'm making a pizza or I'm making this. And I was like, that, you know, best bitter will go in the dough quite nicely. That um, that will go quite nicely in this cooking. You know, they tend to go that way. More, yeah, I, more I've than pairing, inherited. More like cooking with beer. I've inherited like beers where someone's got them and they're like oh we're, i'm not gonna have the rest of them like you can have it but it's stuff that i wouldn't normally have either or they've left them around here that's like oh i'm not gonna finish them you just have them and those for me tend to be the cooking beers yeah um or i think we did a podcast episode where we needed some like super like a pack of some supermarket like generic not generic but like yeah more traditional style but it's not saying that i drink on the regular yeah but i couldn't get it in a single pack i could only get it in a four pack and i was like guess you're gonna be used to make brownies or something yeah it's like, yeah. <laughs> like that's what that's good for exactly i always save my um flanders reds and and similar Ooh. like i feel like i always save those because i feel like those actually like lambics i feel like those are elevated oh, bits yeah yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, actually i lie i do love a bit of um duchess with blue cheese still just duchess yes blue trees just like no but yeah Barley flanders well. red and alambic like those bits but it's that acidity like it cuts through things like it's so mm. is it funny that i feel like barley wines you know flanders reds lambic beers like all of those the things in the similar vein i always feel like like the, the things that are related to those is what i mean not that they are all the same um those are the ones that I, I almost feel are more elevated mm. in sense of like this sounds so stupid but it's like oh this makes me feel really like i feel fancy or i feel like expensive and luxurious and so well, i always say those and i'm like i might have a meal or anything that's like barrel aged it'll be like barrel aged in a chardonnay barrel oh, or something and i'm like oh it's delish. fancy i need to save it delish. for a nice meal like, they're usually in bigger bottles they're usually higher abv they're usually because it's a bigger bottle you then feel fancy because it reminds you of wine like yes. all of this like makes it makes you want to keep it as a special beer like it's like, like a it's, wax it's top that, you're like right. i can't it's got a wax it's, top it's like that there. wine that wine training like you know you see it wine is, it's like yeah. oh, wine is saved for pairing with dinner like or you know you save this fancy bottle so you've got a big sharing bottle you're like i need to save that and 
have exactly. it at a fancy event. Like, this is how I've got ones that are like by society. Chardonnay barrel aged, like fancy, fancy, Delish. you know, mixed firm, mm. la 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 la. Like, all those. Those are the ones that I'm like, oh, I need to wait till I like cook something that can really uh, like accompany this. But I never, I never get around. To, like that's just never something that I'm doing like I'm not <laughs> prepping my meals and being like oh what is in my beer cellar today? let's be real like, let me... <laughs> let's be real I'm like how let's many... have a man dinner and I actually don't want to <laughs> drink while I'm eating I want to drink after I'm eating how many sharing bottles have we got and we're just like we're saving it for that time to share it and like the sign to share it to the time to share it just doesn't come around like I am making an effort to take the sharing bottles with me to, to my monthly bottle share because Otherwise, I'm never getting rid of those bitches. Oh, or I'm just going to sit there and episode. drink it all by myself. This is another <laughs> episode idea that I actually had come up with, and AI didn't come up with this, and we've talked about this before. I feel like we should have a segment that's called, like, the shelf of shame, and we should have to, <laughs> because like, Because you've got a shelf of shame, that's why. <laughs> I do. I do. And But I feel like the shelf of shame segment or like bonus content or maybe a go- like a lie. I haven't fully like workshopped it. I just know that shelf of shame works as a name and I've got a massive one and it should just be like this is on my shelf of shame and this is why and here's the story behind why it's on my shelf of shame. And then we drink it. <laughs> and then yeah, the world continues to turn and that's one less bottle on the shelf of shame and that's how we get ourselves out. Of this debt that we've created. I'm not joking. Can you see that? If you're watching this video, (laughs) that is a single serving. uh, Oh, yeah, she's bought a. a, a, uh, Like, icy machine. A slushy machine is what A slushy machine. Because I just was like, well, that would be fun. Well, I've got a a beer (laughs) spike. Because I've I've been. I haven't used it. There are some beers that I got, like, duplicates of, and I. After we tried f- the episode, we're like, let's try freezing it to make a slushy, and that actually didn't work out too badly. Like yeah. it worked, right? There's some beers I was like, this would make a killer fucking slushy. Yeah. And then so I bought extras, being like, I'll save that one. And now I was waiting for the right moment, and now I've got the single serving <laughs> slushy machine, <laughs> so I can give it a go. And I've bought it secondhand from down the road yeah. for like a fourth of its price, if not more. So now I can have that beer I was saving and then go, nah, it's shit, and then just let it melt <laughs> and then drink it anyways. And it's fine. It's good. So, yeah, let us know if you want to hear about the shelf of shame. Like, if you like the idea shelf of shelf of shame. of shame, let us know. Let us know. <laughs> Make and we, are, we will just have an episode at some point where we just do these daft things like beer spikes, <laughs> slushy machine. <laughs> Yeah, um, it would be fun we, to try. We stopped ourselves from buying the, the cocktail smoker so that we could smoke I almost beer. bought it again today. Yeah. <laughs> it's so and I'm bad. considering getting a, getting a Guinness, like, Guinness surge, surge unit to use on, on nitro <laughs> beers. Like It's because I saved the smoker. And <laughs> I was putting in... I had to order something else on Amazon. Um, and Amazon was like, Hey, you, guess what's on sale? 40%. Oh, is it on sale? And I was like, son of a bitch, it's 40% off. <laughs> and then I was like, and it, and it looks like a UFO. And I was yeah. like, oh, why do you got to look cool as well? <laughs> and then I was like, no. Because I just put in another order of things I actually needed, like <sighs> things I couldn't get at the supermarket that I needed. So I put it on there. And I was like, if I put in another, because Rick, it's Rick's Amazon account. <laughs> He's going to see so, like, it. like, he can see everything yeah. I order. Not that he cares. It's not, don't, no one take this out of context and make it like I need his approval. Right. But like, if I order something that I don't need, I just hear <laughs> in the other room, like, what the actual fuck? Why? <laughs> why? And if I order that, he'd be like, why? You did it's, not need it's that. It's really important. <laughs> It's really important for the podcast that we have a cocktail smoker. I came home. I told him I was buying that slushy machine. And he was like, cool. He, his response literally was, cool, another thing that's going to take up space you're never going to use. Great. And then he walked out. And I was like, <laughs> I, I went, oh, I'm going to go buy this thing second hand. And he was Shout like, oh, out. what is it? And then I told him. And then he went, oh, great. Another thing you won't use. Cool. And then he literally like, walked out. I'd like to take this moment. To give a shout out to our husbands, Gordon and Rick, for putting up with the stupid beer shit 
that we do on a regular basis for taking in our parcels <laughs> of beer, shit. for putting up with the amount of time we spend talking to each other about the podcast, the amount of time we spend in the evenings recording when we could be doing something with them, and for the stupid shit that we buy. Because we're like, but we need it for the podcast. That's a podcast bit and that's a podcast thing. It's important. It's for work. I <laughs> That makes us like, no this money. Is... This is the whole thing. We make zero money. We pay money. <laughs> we pay to do we this. We pay money for this. We pay hosting fees oh, for this. God. I mean, if you want to buy us this a grow, and if you want to buy us a coffee. Segway. If you'd like to help us and stop our husbands from going, why did you buy that? You can, <laughs> can pretend. Donate. We can pretend your money bought right. these things, but right. it's my money that right. bought these <laughs> You can support us on coffee. I could tell him the money came from Kofi. No, oh my I'll god! Be like, Kofi paid. If for you want to see us do more of this stupid shit, please support us on Kofi. Give us a little donation. You get thirty day access to our bonus content, which you know we can do this stupid stuff on, and you can see it. And you can let us know what else you want to see. Link I mean, I'm a show notes. I am one hundred percent gonna be doing like a will it slushy segment. Yes. So I'm just gonna start going exactly. like, will it, like this is gonna be a very quick like we're talking about reels the shorts youtube shorts whatever whatever yeah. it's called and it's gonna be like will it slushy and then it's gonna be me going will it slushy with something and then i'm gonna dump it in the slushy machine you're gonna see the process and it's gonna be like sped up and then i'll take a sip of it and go no <laughs> or <laughs> yes <laughs> that will be the video <laughs> she's gonna go viral <laughs> and it's yeah. gonna be amazing I, we well, this will be a woman through the podcast um <laughs> sponsored Women's by slush puppy slush. in no time i wish that would be if i could get the big size i think that i could really do some great things so slush puppy, some damage. If you hear this, i am willing if you give me a proper full-size machine for free i will i promise you i will do a will it slushy every week especially in the summer and it doesn't even have to just be beer it would be like whatever you want like diet coke will it slushy probably not we're gonna try it give it a go um the last useless thing that i came home with and it's not useless but it is useless in the sense of i have a lot of glasses which again maybe that's another topic we can go on our beer glassware, our beer glassware tours and we can yeah. talk about some of our favorite glasses and the stories yeah. behind them i feel like that could be cool because some of them maybe do for me i buy glasses when i go to breweries now because i stopped buying t-shirts because i have so many t-shirts <laughs> Now I've kind of had to try not to buy glass if there's something else I can buy. But there's some cool stories behind some of these glasses. But the last one I came home with was one that looks like it has a label on it that says, okay. hello, my name is. And it says, hello, my name is Sour. Oh, that's fun. Yeah, I bought that at the Hive. I literally was like, can I buy this glass from you? And they were like, yeah, sure, fuck it, whatever. <laughs> Oh, shout out to Greg. He's the best. Yay, I, was like, hi, Greg. Can I, bu-? I was like, can I buy this? And he was like, yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, yes. And then I went out to the table and went, I just bought, it was also after I'd spent the day at Siren for their birthday party. Okay. And then decided to walk the dog down to the hive and we were drinking like literally stouts, barley wines, like all that. Walked down to the hive, had another two beers. One, The first one was a tipper. That was like... <laughs> Yeah, and then I was like, "Oh, this glass is fun." I went in, and I was like, "That glass is fucking cool. Can I buy that?" And he was like, "Yes, you can." And then I walked back out, and I was like, "I bought a glass." And Rick's like, "Fucking, of course you did." <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, "But it's really cool." And he's like, "I'm sure it is." And we're both still not even, divorced. Didn't even want to see it. Was just like, "I'm sure it's great." <laughs> uh, these are strong marriages, people strong marriages rick and i realized that we couldn't go and date other people because they just wouldn't get us no we have some not. really weird conversations that no yeah. one else would get that's true um so i think should we hold off on doing any more prompts here yeah i think that's a good point to stop and let's save some of that while we're questioning I mean, our marriages <laughs> we can we can save some of these because maybe we can just revisit them in future just to yeah. spice things up because there's another i stopped at five that was only five there's another 25 more I've got. We could just randomly generate yeah, more Yeah, we just later. chuck them in. Fuck it. Bonus yeah. episode. Uh, yeah. How do you feel overall that the AI bot has done from what's I, come up so far? I enjoyed those. 
I thought they were fun. Yeah, I like those. I like that better than the script, I think. I think I like the script better. <laughs> really? Because it just made me chuckle. Because oh, I had no idea what was real and what wasn't real. <laughs> um, I didn't dislike the prompts. I think it, some of them were just a bit... I kind of like my prompt better. Yeah. Like, let's talk about glassware now. Yeah. Let's talk about shit that I buy I don't need. Because I just think some of it was a little bit... Like the food, the beer and pairings felt like a little bit vanilla, so yeah, to speak. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And the future craft beer, I feel like that's all like really obvious stuff. Because the but props I was putting in was for interesting things, and it was like right. here, and I was like, eh, yeah, yeah, it's not I unique, see. is it? But I think the thing is, we you take that prompt and then we put our spin on it, and that's where you know it's that, you know, that's that's the, that's the non money maker. That's <laughs> that's the money no. spender. I think you know then that's where it really comes into its own because then we like make it our own and this is that thing isn't it like it's a jumping off point with AI I think starting yeah. point saves you a bit of time gets your brain going think about how you'd actually do it exactly a prompt's a prompt for a reason isn't it yeah cool so that that is that um <laughs> I've got some I had it generate me some puns do you want to hear some of the puns that it generated sure. me some beer specific puns um we you can go through i also asked them to use it in a sentence so i'll give you some of the puns first and then you can rate each one on how good and how shit it is just like thumbs up thumbs down okay <laughs> good or shit there's like there's really no in between um <laughs> so fucking stupid um i'm hoppy as a clam when i drink craft beer <laughs> oh no that is a thumbs down like <laughs> you don't love that one no, because hops and clams, why are they going together? Like, Well, all right. You had I get drink... like happy as a clam, hoppy uh, as on. a clam, cool. But like, no. I mean, it could work as a title if we were doing um, those stouts again. With the, that had the shellfish in them. Yeah, yeah that <laughs> could work. Yeah, I suppose so. I was not hoppy as a clam, but I didn't hate no. it. But I wasn't hoppy as a clam. Um, craft beer is ale you need in life. That one's a thumbs down. That's a, that's a thumbs down. Life. That's definitely a thumbs it's down. It's not even like a good no. one. That is just shoehorning like in ale, isn't it? <laughs> oh, here's... I feel like this one's quite popular. Don't worry. Beer happy. <laughs> okay. I thought you were going to say be hoppy, but beer happy is Oh, be hoppy is way better. Right. This is just beer hoppy. Like this is not. This just sounds sad. Yeah. Um. This doesn't even make sense. I'm feeling a bit stout today. Maybe I should drink a lighter beer. <laughs> no. That one's terrible. As in the AI feel what does it even mean? I mean, I suppose stout <laughs> is another word for you know being bigger, isn't it? So you need a lighter beer. That like genuinely wouldn't have even crossed my brain, yeah. because I wouldn't even think somebody would say that as a sentence. Yeah. That is a tr that is like bad. Yeah. Um, craft beer makes me feel malt right. Oh no, <laughs> that's awful. These are really really bad. <laughs> yeah, they're not good at generating. No. Uh, I'm not lager than life. I'm just pint sized. That's not too bad. I quite like that one. I don't love it, but I like that it says I'm pint size. <laughs> Everyone, side side tangent to this. I feel like everybody in my team is like has like a foot of height on me. I swear <laughs> to God, so everyone's like, always taller than me, places, so I don't worry about it. We go out places as a team, and it's like they're here, and then I'm like, "Hey guys, we're all here together." Yeah, welcome and to my then, life. Yeah, they're like, do you need me to get things off the shelf for you? And I'm like, no, it's okay. I can just jump up and get it myself. Like, no big deal. Um, so that's, that one makes me happy because that's what makes me think of this comparatively to, like, fucking everyone else around me. Yeah. Um, I don't have a drinking problem. I have a craft beer solution because the prompt was specifically puns for craft beer, <laughs> not just beer. <laughs> I don't like that one. Yeah, I don't think no. that was good. Yeah. Um craft beer is brutal that's all right i feel like i feel like that's low-hanging fruit but it's effective yeah yeah this one i don't understand the pun i'm not drunk i'm just a bit tipsy 
I feel like that's a statement. <laughs> yeah. Just a statement. It's not really a pun. Yeah, that was bad. Um, craft beer is my hoppy place. I feel that's like right. that could be a hoppy yeah. place's motto. That would be good. Um, I don't need a therapist. I just need a beerapist. <laughs> it's oh, so no. bad. That is so bad that it yeah. actually makes me laugh. So that one. There's that. It's got that going for it. Bear me strength. Bear me strength. Yeah, no. Any idea? No. So instead of give me strength, but maybe. Um, there's, not I'm not an alcoholic. I'm a beerologist. <laughs> I always like find those. Oh, I'm not an alcoholic. I'm this. There is always a bit like yeah. you know, a bit close Just... to the line. Yeah, agree. And I was just like, that's not a pun. Probably okay. shouldn't um, be making a joke out of alcoholism. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, I have those same thoughts every time yeah. I see stuff like that. And I'm yeah. like, oh, that's a bit of a... Um, beer is the answer, but I can't remember the question. I feel like that should be on like a really, like an old man's t-shirt. Yeah, that's a properly old... I'm pretty sure I've seen <laughs> old t-shirts. white man's t-shirt. I'm pretty sure I've seen t-shirts like that in the Caribbean. Like in the, in the really bad gift shops. Yeah, it and is like, always like and, and like in Key West and stuff like oh, hundred percent in Key West, <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> I'm not beer pressure. I'm beer encouragement. I'm guessing it's supposed to be like peer pressure. Yeah, but like no. again, those putting those two yeah no things together does it make sense? And like yeah, um, this is another one. This is t-shirt design. Beer is proof that God loves us and wants us to be happy. I mean, that's an actual quote, isn't it? Yeah, but I feel like I've seen that on t-shirts. Like, yeah, yeah, I yeah. have seen people wearing that on t-shirts as well. Yeah, yeah it is, um... I don't want to say a name in case I'm wrong, but... Yeah. I know who it is, I think. Let's see. Yes, it's a Benjamin Franklin quote. Yeah. It says, seven things Benjamin Franklin never said. Oh, they say that he <laughs> said it, but he didn't actually. He said, God made beer because he loves us and he wants us to be happy. Uh, but yeah, I don't know if he actually said it or not. That was just a quick Google it gets, search. It gets yeah. accredited to him, I believe, but I don't think it's true. Yeah, it does, yeah. But again, not a pun, just a quote and a shitty t-shirt design. Yeah. Um, beer makes everything bruter. That's like no, not a terrible. great use of brew. Like brutiful. If they said brutiful, I'd, I'd let that slide a bit, but oh, bruter, yeah, yeah, yeah. no. I'd give brutiful, but brutus, no. <laughs> yeah. Um, I don't always drink beer, but when I do, I drink Dos Equis. Wait, that's not a pun, that's a slogan. It's exactly <laughs> what it's typed out. What it's typed out is, I don't always drink beer, but when I do, I drink Dos Equis. And then it says, wait, that's not a pun, that's a slogan. It is indeed a slogan for an advert for Dos Equis. Yeah. <laughs> I think it's the most interesting man in the world advert. Or yeah. Like um, beer is good for you. It's made of hops, barley and yeast. That's a balanced diet right there. Oof. That's yeah, another terrible pun, is it? Yeah, no, it's um, not a pun. <laughs> and last one, which is again just makes me sad. Beer is cheaper than therapy and more fun. But therapy is mm. necessary. That's yeah. not like That's not cool. <laughs> yeah, that I just every time for me, I feel like that's tacky when it's yeah. like uh comparing mental health or alcoholism and stuff and it's like, but beer is fun. It's like, yeah, but don't downplay. Yeah those things a um, bit of that uh, toxic masculinity going on again there yeah and i think that's kind of like yeah that's kind of some of the stuff that yeah similar like th that type of theme is kind of some of the stuff that was like coming up that examples being something like tell us a time where you did this ridiculous thing blah 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 it's like has the potential to be funny has the potential to be like yeah. super toxic masculinity yeah and lad culture um <laughs> yeah it's like these sentences aren't better so i'm not even going to read them all out but most of them are similar to that um and the only other one that's not there is beer give me strength to deal with this annoying customer <laughs> that was like it was like do you want me to put these puns into sentences and i was like yeah sure go sure. for it that is nothing to do with any of the above <laughs> it's completely separate um yeah so there's that. Those are all the really shit beer puns. So what we've learned is that AI is shit at puns. <laughs> yeah. But does it make a bitchin' poem? Do you want to hear a limerick? Yeah. 
There once was a man who loved beer. He drank it all day without fear. He tried every style from mild to wild, but craft beer was always his dear. Oh, I quite like that. I like that one. I like that, that he tried every style from mild to wild. Yeah. That was my favourite part of that. Um, I can also give you a short poem it generated. I'm not giving you the sonnet. That is way too fucking long. <laughs> maybe. Maybe we'll put that someplace in a special bonus box. Yeah. yeah. Um, a poem about craft beer written by the Bing chat GPT. Craft beer, craft beer, you make me smile with your amazing taste and style. You're always there to cheer me up when life is hard or I'm in a rut. Craft beer, craft beer, you make me laugh with your names in clever craft. You're always there to entertain me with your stories and your history. <laughs> Oh, I don't know. Craft beer, craft beer, you make me happy with your quality and variety. You're always there to satisfy me with your flavours and your beauty. Oh, that's taken some liberties <laughs> on the rhyming structure. Um, craft beer, craft beer, you're the best. You're better than all the rest. You're my favourite drink of all. You're my partner. You're my pal. That's it. That's the end of the poem. Okay. How do we yeah. feel AI does it right um, in poems? The first one was definitely better. The limerick was better. Poem was okay. <laughs> the sonnet, I don't feel like it's much better. <laughs> Let's save that and we'll put that on as a bonus, bonus. On, uh, on coffee. So if you I want to see, I feel like see... it's just ripped off <laughs> Shakespeare. Well, okay. yeah, I mean sonnets, you know. Yeah. So if you want to see Shakespeare's Ode to Beer, yeah, uh, you need to go over Shakespeare. To coffee. Shakespeare via Bing Chat GPT's <laughs> Ode to Craft Beer. Um, you need to head on over to Kofi via the link in uh, in the show notes and donate us a little something something and then you'll have access to the sonnet. Your payment, your payment will be the sonnet. Yeah. You, and it's, you I mean, will, it's better than the puns. It's, at you'll least it's us. actually a sonnet. So there's that. <laughs> and if you don't thank us, you can tell us what things you'd rather us record instead. <laughs> Uh, cool. So we're, we're getting into the final stretch. I thought maybe there's some really good pitches. New pot. Like if we didn't start a women's brew, like let me take you to a world where we didn't start a women's brew. Dun dun dun. We were like, what else can we do? We don't have a name. I thought we were doing a dairy podcast. A women's me. <laughs> or a film podcast. Or a film podcast. <laughs> women's view. Of women's view. <laughs> Uh, there's lots of there's lots of other things that we were gonna do, but say Fair. we still were like craft beer is for us, but we just didn't come up with a women's brew. We just didn't know the name. Okay, and we were like, what direction are we gonna take this? I've got some pitches. Can I give you some of these pitches? You may, and you can tell me would you buy into this? We can discuss. Is this okay. something that we would consider? Okay. So, the podcast is called Beer Me Up, Scotty. A podcast where women beam up craft beer. That's all the name. Beer me up, Spot. Beer me up, Scotty. A podcast where women beam up craft beer. I mean, End I name. like a bit of Star Trek. Not gonna lie. So here we go. This is this is the brief it's given me. The hosts yeah. are two female friends who love sci-fi and craft beer. Each podcast format is a mix of beer reviews, sci-fi trivia, and hilarious banter. I think we can do that. I mean, we do have the bants. All the bands, fucking Archbishop of Bantry, who we are. Uh, each episode features a different craft beer and a different sci fi theme. Okay. The hosts use Star Trek inspired transporter to beam up the beer of the week from a local brewery. Okay. Um, the hosts also use sci fi references and jokes to describe the beer and its flavour profile. <laughs> Sounds very involved. I'm fairly certain that one of them... Oh, you'll see. You'll, you'll see in a minute. Okay. Uh, the hosts also quiz each other on their sci-fi and trivia facts to the theme of the episode. The podcast is aimed at women who enjoy both craft beer and sci-fi, but also appeals to anyone who likes humour and geek culture. So, I've got an example of the outline of an episode, but what okay. did you think on that? Like, are you sold I mean, on that alone? I mean, Concerns, it's interesting. Thoughts? I don't know if, like... I'm, I'm all about the geek but like I don't know if we've got enough <laughs> knowledge to be that in depth about it I think I would agree in the sense of I feel like this is wanting geek not in the way that I am yeah in the sense of it's like it wants me to know Star Wars Star Trek and I mean I know Star Wars like, yeah, yeah. obviously yeah. and I could do that 
Yeah. But you can only feel so many episodes of that. That's a whole right. themed thing. Right. Star Trek, I'm like, there's red shirts and they all <laughs> die. They always die. <laughs> That's my that's my knowledge. <laughs> I'm like, does he have a red shirt on? He's fucked. He's, he's dead. Um, Will Wheaton was in it. Yes. Okay. Good um, job. Obviously, there's uh, John Luc Picard. Good job. Everyone Good job. knows John Luc Picard. Um, you have what's his name who talks like this? <laughs> I forget his name. Data. I don't know. No, no. Um, <laughs> not data. Not at all who I'm thinking of. Oh. <laughs> William Shatner. That's oh, William exactly Shatner. who I'm thinking of is William Shatner. He's in it. He's he a guy. He wears a blue shirt. No. Yellow. Yellow. Yes. <laughs> yes. Picard's a blue shirt. No. Not a blue shirt. No. That's it. That's the extent of my knowledge. Okay, let me pitch you what the outline of an episode would look like. Okay. See if we're bought into this. Um, the theme time travel beer back to the future ipa by flux capacitor brewing is that a brewery <laughs> i don't know do they let's have a google let's have a google i'm curious it's piqued my interest i'm amazed you didn't google this before actually i didn't uh just not a brewery as far as i can see but it's definitely the name of a beer they're okay. making stuff up now uh, so that's the beer we'd be having um okay. i could do back to the future stuff uh so intro the host introduced themselves and the podcast concept they explain the theme of the beer of the week they use the transporter to beam up the beer from the brewery they make jokes about time travel paradoxes and marty mcfly could you do that i could probably do some of that i could probably do that yeah i could probably do that use chat gpt to write some of those those comments but that's fine (laughs) um beer review the host rate uh, taste and rate the beer they describe its appearance aroma flavor and mouthfeel they use sci-fi and metaphors to describe it such as it's as hoppy as a klingon warrior <laughs> i don't think i could do that it's a citrusy aroma like a fresh orange from hill valley it has a smooth and balanced flavor like a well calibrated time machine <laughs> <laughs> it's bitter and dry finish it's like being stuck in 1955 <laughs> I feel like this is the kind of thing that we actively try and keep away from because we want people to eat, like, find beer easily accessible. Like, that's kind of part of our MO is we want to open it up to more people. So kind of giving random descriptions like that, like, doesn't help anybody. No, and and then it basically says, you know, then we have to sign off with our catchphrase, which is beer me up, Scotty. Cool. Cool so i'm not sold um, on that yeah i think obviously we got invited to the podcast festival like for to, and you got to chat on a panel about yeah. being a you know being in this when i was in greece niche about podcast being a niche podcast yeah i feel like that was real niche so niche that we that probably wouldn't niche. even get invited to be on the niche panel <laughs> because we'd be so niche that they yeah. would be like you have five <laughs> audience members right right i like <laughs> 10 audience members <laughs> I'm not sold on that. You're clearly not sold on that. No. That's fine. Um, shall I move on to the next idea? Please. Okay, let me tell you the, the brief before we get into the outline. Okay. Um, this one's called Beer and Loathing, a podcast where women vent about life and drink craft beer. Oh, I that's, do that anyway. That's the full name. That's the full name. <laughs> not just, that's the entire no, name. That's what we do. It's true. Hosts are two female friends who are fed up with the daily struggles and annoyances of life. <laughs> Two hosts close to home. It's hitting hard, hey? The podcast format is a mix of ranting, venting, and complaining about various topics (laughs) while drinking craft beer. Each episode features a different craft beer and a different topic to rant about. (laughs) The hosts use sarcastic and humorous tone to express their frustrations and opinions. Why are they the calling me out beer like related... this? <laughs> yeah, feel personally attacked. Yeah. The host also used beer-related puns and jokes to lighten the mood and make fun of themselves and others. And the podcast is aimed at women who need a break from stress and pressure of life, but also appeals to anyone who likes humour and honesty. <laughs> I mean... It got like, real quick. It got real, real quick. <laughs> like, excuse me... <laughs> Is, are you are you down for this podcast? <laughs> it's what we do anyway. We just haven't called it that. It's true. Yeah. <laughs> do we need to rebrand our name? <laughs> Thanks, Chat GPT. Next week on Beer and Loathing. 
Beer and Loathing. I quite like that name, actually, if I'm being mm. honest. As a, as a, you know, journalist background in the sense of that's what I, like, sort of went to school for. That was what my interest and passion sort of was when I was younger. Like, Beer and Loathing just feels like such a, like a cool name. <laughs> like, I'm like, yeah, that's cool. <laughs> but arguably, I feel like too cool of a name for me. Yeah. Like, I, it feels too cool. And I feel like, like, if you're just going to moan in everyone, like, how many people are going to listen to that every week? Yeah, we're sorry. We're just whinging. Oh, we try not to do that every week <laughs> for the full <laughs> hour and a half. Yeah. Um, here's a sample episode. The topic is online dating, and we're going to have Swipe Right Pale Ale by Matchmaker Bruin. So <laughs> the, <laughs> the intro is the hosts introduce themselves and the concept, explain the topic of the week of the beer, Open a beer, toast to their listeners. They make jokes about online dating apps and profiles. <laughs> and then it just says, ranting. <laughs> the hosts share their ranting. personal experiences in online stories of online dating disasters, such as ghosting, catfishing, and lying, cheating, etc. They use colourful language and exaggeration to describe the dates and their reactions. They also read some funny or horrible messages they received or sent on dating apps. They make <laughs> jokes about their dating standards and press preferences. And then it follows on to just say venting, because this is the structure of it now. <laughs> venting. The hosts vent about the challenges and frustrations of online dating, such as an unrealistic expectation, lack of communication, superficiality, harassment, etc. They express their feelings and opinions about online dating culture and etiquette. They also give some advice and tips on how to survive and succeed online dating and make jokes about their dating goals and strategies. <laughs> Wow. And then there's a whole section of complaining I'm not going to read, but there's also <laughs> complaining. Do you want to know what our catchphrase would be? Please. Beer and loathing in podcast land. Oh, that's lame. That's so lame. That's you have lame. all the makings to make a yeah. really great sign-off catchphrase. And that is just not the one. No. Um, Pants. Nothing to do with beer. So I think the only time beer comes in is we're like, this is so the beer we're that we're drinking. Beer. Let's talk right. about it. And now we're getting into it. Yeah. I don't like that from a beer podcast. No. I don't feel like us. No. Um, however, it's something I would listen to. Would you listen to this podcast? I probably would listen to it. Um, I don't think I'll be very good on that particular episode, seeing as I met my husband on online dating. So. Me too. <laughs> yeah, but actually, so, I think that's what would actually, make it really yeah. good to talk about we'd online have, dating. We'd have a very different perspective on that. <laughs> saying that, though, I haven't been online dating for like... 10 years plus year, like years. over 10 years yeah and the, years. And the concept and i did i couldn't relate to what online dating is like right now absolutely not and i think i'd be terrified horrified shocked um horror, right. all that yeah but i definitely listen to someone else talk about that yeah <laughs> if someone else wants that idea take it they, be cooler than us because that is a yeah. really cool name <laughs> you better be super cool talk about all that invite us on we'll come on yeah and we'll talk about the positive side of, <laughs> of online dating. The last one that it prompted me with, because that one basically said to me, "Yeah, was that too rude and vulgar?" And I went, <laughs> "Yes." It, oh, give me something a little bit was. more. Yeah, I just said, "Give me something okay. more on yeah. those." Um, so this is the third podcast it pitched me, which was "Beer and Cheers," a podcast where women celebrate life and drink craft beer. Okay, that felt right. Cool. Yeah, that sounds good. The the brief two female hosts who are passionate about the joys and pleasures of life format is a mix of that's what it was it was this is too vulgar and do you want something a little bit more uplifting and i said yes the podcast format is a mix of praising complimenting and appreciating various topics while drinking craft beer each episode features a different beer and a topic to cheer about um hosts a cheerful enthusiastic tone to express their gratitude and admiration <laughs> also use beer related puns and jokes to add humor and fun the podcast is aimed at women who want to boost their mood and positivity, but also appeal to anyone who likes humour and happiness. Oh. Are you bought into that? Um, yeah, maybe. Um, I think that I think I again I think I would listen to it, but I think again the beer is kind of taking second place to whatever the topic is, which is not really what we're about. Um, it's it's interesting though. Also, we're not that cheery all the time. Like, a fair amount of the time, I think we are. I don't think we could do it every episode. I would say that based <laughs> on the brief, I don't think I could do it. I don't even think I would listen to it. 
it sounds exhausting. <laughs> too too cheery. It's too happy. I will tell you, <laughs> Rick took Phelan out on a daddy door today on Aww. Friday because he had the day off work. Yeah, and they ended up in a little village, and he said that basically. All these people, as he was walking down the road, he went on a hike and it had to cut through a village and everything. Mm-hmm. And he's like, everyone was saying hi to us and talking to us. And like, I went in a shop and all this stuff happened. And I just went, that sounds exhausting. Why were they talking to you? That's like, what I was... Gordon does. Like, I'm just like walking along and people are like, hi. And I'm like, hi, how are you? And he's like, do you know that person? I was like, no, they're just being nice and saying hi. And he's like, why? why oh, I could deal with that. Girls? I could yeah. deal with the like, oh yeah. hi, happy day. Meh. But he was literally yeah. like, oh, I'm looked in a shop, and someone's like, oh, can I help you? Do you want to come in the shop? Oh, and then talking about the dog, talking about the village. I was like, you like, no, I'm exhausted. Please don't talk to me. I'm mentally drained with all that positivity that you just told me happened to you. Yeah. I wouldn't even. <laughs> I literally wouldn't even listen to this podcast. I could do an episode of it. Yeah. But that is about it. The, the wow. example it gave was a, a topic about friendship. And it oh. was toasting to... <laughs> intro. The hosts introduce themselves in the podcast concept. They explain the topic and the beer of the week. They open the beer and toast to their listeners and make jokes about their friendship and beer. It's like, yeah, I could do that part. I mean, we are beer besties. <laughs> but then there's a whole thing that goes into praising section and a complimenting section and an appreciating oh, section. No. <laughs> And then it says the sign off is beer and cheers in podcast land. What is with this these, AI chatbot on about podcast land? Yeah, oh, beer no, and cheers horrendous. in podcast land. What the fuck no. are they talking about? This is turning real into like about, beer and loathing. About, this, about podcast this positivity, land. This positivity <laughs> episode has turned me into beer and loathing. <laughs> I thought I would share, I from, share with you though. That there was some, um, as I asked it to give me some other pitches, what chat, the, the Bing chat GPT gives you is like, it's like, here's this, and then you can learn more on some website that it lists, which I'm guessing is where they get some of the topic ideas okay. from. Um, and what's funny <laughs> is the bottom of one has lovebeerlearning.co.uk on it. No! <laughs> it does! The drink, so one is, it says learn more, one, the drink business.com, and two, lovebearlearning.co.uk. <laughs> it's been surfing my website. It I'll has take indeed. those clicks. I'll take those clicks. So, what I think we should do as well to save for a bonus episode is I've got some more very quick name and concept that I can pitch you, okay. but let's save that for a yeah, bonus let's save episode. That. Go, go get that bonus one. content over on coffee and give us a little content. donation <laughs> and um, that's the silly. stuff that's being pulled from lovebeerlearning.co.uk I don't Ooh. want that stuff to leak yeah I mean, you just and go look save... at my website lovebeerlearning.co.uk and go see what's over there I will save all those extra bonus bits specifically for the bonus episode so yeah that that is that to close things off how about I give you, so I had it write pictures for podcasts. One for you, one for me, and oh. a rebranding. Are we going to go do our own break. podcasts? Are you leaving me? I'm just saying, when I have to, <laughs> when I get, you become too big, and I need to resort to Will It Slushy. I need to, <laughs> will it I need to sell myself out to Will It Slushy, <laughs> and buying UFO smokers, and weird as fuck <laughs> shit. Uh, because you are big beer hop I don't know what celebrity you're that's going to be what I have to do so but I thought it's only fair if I'm writing myself a podcast to write you All a right. podcast All a right. non-beer okay. related potentially okay. podcast um, and then I thought maybe we need a revamp so I thought I'd revamp okay. plus one is this um, what you asked me why you asked me about my hobbies earlier I today? just went give me your top favourite hobbies that <laughs> are beer like, tell me your hobbies <laughs> I don't think it's like okay. no your hobbies but I wanted you to give me your yeah. top favourite ones okay um, so do you want to hear your podcast yes please okay so I put in basically the things that you said were your top ones which were to recap so i did put craft beer in because mm-hmm. i said that's one thing craft beer sewing um oh it doesn't say it doesn't list them all basically what was it it was sewing reading, sewing, reading collecting things collecting things and drawing and drawing yeah 
and then I put craft beer as well. Uh-huh. So it's the podcast is called Joanne's Crafty Corner, a podcast where Joanne Love shares her passion for craft beer and crafts. I could that do is the full name. That is That's not the just full name. The... <laughs> yeah, it's, it's Joanne's Crafty Corner dash a podcast where Joanne Love shares her passion for craft beer and crafts. I feel like I can um, make that better. <laughs> how would you punch it up? Um, what's it called? Joanne's Crafty, crafty Corner. Crafty Corner. Mm. I reckon you could just cut off all the end of it and just call it Crafty Corner. Crafty Corner. Crafts with crafts. Crafts with craft beer. Oh, I think Crafty Corner, like not even Joanne's Crafty Corner, just Crafty Corner. Crafty Corner. Corner. There's got to be a podcast called Crafty Corner, though, surely. Uh, I bet there is. Boop, boop, boop. Through the magic of the internet. We'll find out. Uh. No, there's Stell's Crafty Corner. Someone used Chat GPT. Yeah, they did. <laughs> Some people used the Chat that's GPT left. to generate their well. name. Um, yeah, that's that's the name of yours. It says the host is Joanne Love, a craft beer enthusiast and crafter who loves sewing, reading, drawing, and collecting things. Okay, this is there true. you go. There's all the things. <laughs> um, podcast format is a mix of beer reviews, interviews, tutorials, and tips on various topics related to craft beer and crafts. Uh, each episode features a different craft beer and a different craft project. I kind of like that. That's quite good, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. Um, host tastes and rates the beer of the week and describes the appearance, aroma, flavour, mouthfeel, and finish. Host also interviews guests who are experts or fans of the craft project of the week, such as sewers, readers, drawers, collectors, etc. So basically, just spit just back out everybody. exactly just everybody. the things. All the people. Everyone that crafts, all the crafters. Um, <laughs> host also demonstrates and explains how to do the craft project of the week, such as sewing a garment, reading a book. That's a <laughs> yeah, stretch for a book. craft I'm going project. To, uh, <laughs> demonstrate how I read a book <laughs> while I drink my craft beer. Drawing a picture, collecting an item, etc. I am picturing you be like. This is how one. I collect an item step while I drink one. my craft beer. Open the book. Turn to page one. one. That's brilliant. Brilliant. That was so like. This is like the unnecessary context that All AI right. puts into it. It's so good. <laughs> Um, The host also gives some advice and recommendations on how to improve or enjoy the craft project of the week, such as choosing materials, finding inspiration, learning techniques, displaying results, etc. The podcast is aimed at people who share Joanne's love of craft beer and crafts, but also appeals to anyone who likes creativity and fun. Okay. Do you want to hear your your sample episode? (laughs) Your sample episode is called Craft Beer Project. It is sewing a tote bag. Okay. Beer, stitch Fix Pale Ale by So Good Brewing. That's actually a really good brewery name. <laughs> yeah. Because it's spelled S-E-W. S-E-W. So yeah. Good Brewing. So good. I like that better than any of the beer puns. You could have Stitch and Bitch sessions in your tap room. We are fucking... This is, our, this is oh. it. We've got to bleep and this, this out. Literally. <laughs> yeah, bleep, please bleep it bleep out. out. that way. So that then we've bleep got it. Bleep it all of it. Like, make it really not obvious. Like when it, like bleep from the part that we said the beer name to to that point where you said we got to bleep, beep, this out. Beep, 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 beep. Just beep out all the key bits because yeah. we don't want people to figure what out what that it is. Starts now. That is when we open our tap room and brewery. That's what we're calling it. That is it. Yes, this is fucking amazing. <laughs> I love that more than any of the fucking puns that the actual AI was meant to generate. And this really just supports the idea that this is not taking the job away. It's giving you the prompts that you need to come up with the best ideas. Yeah. Amazing. So the intro is, the host introduces herself and the podcast concept. She explains the craft beer project and beer of the week. She opens the beer and gives her first impressions. She makes joke about sewing and stitching. You just bleep out the sewing there. Um... (laughs) Beer review. The host tastes and rates the beer. She describes appearance, clear amber, aroma, oh. piney and biscuity, flavour, Why they keep giving me ice cream? Do they hate me? Caramel, mouthfeel, light and crisp, and finish, clean and refreshing. <laughs> she compares it to other pale ales and Chachi beers. She gives it a score out of five stars. Um, <laughs> the host interviews. So the interview is that you interview a guest who is a that word blogger that and a fan of sewing doing tote that bags thing. yeah doing that thing doing the thing 
They talk about the benefits, challenges, and tips of doing that thing to tote bags. <laughs> they also talk about their favorite fabrics, patterns, designs, etc., mm. etc. They also show some examples of their own tote bags and how they made them. And then there's a tutorial. There's a whole tutorial. There's some tips on how people can improve the their own tote bags mm. doing the thing that they do to their tote bags and it's a whole thing right <laughs> do you want to know <laughs> the outro the host wraps up the episode by summarizing her thoughts of the beer and the craft project she thanks the guests and the listeners for joining her she invites listeners to follow her on social media and leave feedback she teases the next episode's craft beer project and beer she signs she signs off with her catchphrase do you want to know your catchphrase? Oh, please. Am I in podcast? This is Joanne's. Landing? This is. No, you're not in podcast. Oh, land. Okay. This is Joanne's Crafty Corner where I drink beer and do crafts. Cheers. <laughs> <laughs> to the point. I am drinking that beer and I'm making crafts. What do you want? <laughs> in today's episode we're doing that thing to tote bags and then i'm gonna have my guest on let me help you and you're like this is ben joanne's crafty corner where i drink beer and do crafts cheers <laughs> that is like done done I'm out thanks podcast land oh my god that is fucking great <laughs> how do you feel about your um, podcast thoughts um, are you vibing with it would you pick this up yeah i mean i, I could see it with potential again I though i feel like it. it's like we're having a beer, and now we're going to talk about something completely different. Like, there's no kind of melding. I feel of... like this is another visual one. Yeah, but this is something that I think one. that I would watch on YouTube. Yeah, when I'm in it's... bed trying. I think to it's fall a YouTube night, video series it. more than a podcast. I kind of like the concept though of someone yeah. having a beer, drinking a beer, talking drinking about a beer, and then be like, "Now I'm going to teach you how to do." Maybe it could be that instead of doing a completely unrelated, you do a beer craft. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Make a candle. I feel like, um, I feel like, like a beer and book club one would be really good. Like, mm. you know, you open a beer that's kind of you can relate this is covered to the under your somehow. umbrella. It did like, say you can teach people how to read books, Joe. I can teach people how to read books. You I feel like you tutorial. could do like a put a podcast out at the beginning of the month and pick a book, and then you know. You could make, put another episode out at the end that's got a bit of a review on it. Or, like, you know, at, you do it at the end of the month and you're like, okay, next month's book is this. Go read it. And then we do the review with the beer. At, you know, in a We may or may not have toyed around with a, with a beer book club. Is that something we that have... people want to, uh, Let's know. Want to see? <laughs> you want to see a <laughs> we've got beer book lots, club? We've got lots of beer books. Beer and book club Israelis. or a beer book club? Let us know. We could potentially um, do that for you. I would definitely watch. Like I would definitely watch this. Yeah. To to like quiet the brain down at night. Yeah. Watch someone else do crafts that I'm never going to do. <laughs> teach me how to read a book. Yeah, I'm just going to teach everyone how to read a book. I have lots of. I do have genuinely have lots of books. I feel like yeah. I said that in a way that I'm like people are going to be like she doesn't read books. I have lots of books, guys. Um, she does. So that's, I can. That's yours. I... <laughs> I can do you want to hear this. my pitch? Yes. Do you want to hear my pitch? Yeah. Um, this is the so podcast you're going to do when I dump you, right? Yeah, yeah. When you dump me and I have to resort to <laughs> will it slushy and you've got to see me putting like iced coffee in a slushy machine. Like, unfortunately, it didn't prompt me with will it slushy. Oh, that's sad. Um, but that's its own series. I mean. Yeah. You've got that already. Go. You've got that mapped that's out already. already. That's mapped separate. out. Yeah. Side project. Um, that's my side hustle. <laughs> will it slushy. Um, so my pitch is a podcast to called Tories, Brews and Views. That feels like... That feels good. It's yeah. really close. feel like yeah, you could do this. Really close to like <laughs> sort of what we're already doing in that yeah. name. Um, but the whole full name is Tories, Brews and Views, a podcast where Tory Powell shares her passion for craft beer and geek culture. Okay. So there we go. Um, Tory Powell, a craft beer enthusiast and nerd. That I didn't. I didn't type in. Nerd. <laughs> yeah, I didn't I like that. Just want to put that there. I didn't put in geek or nerd. Thank you very much. Uh, who loves Japan, gaming, emo music, and anything geeky? I didn't say that. Thank you. Oh. Um, mix of beer reviews, interviews, discussions, and recommendations on various topics related to craft beer and geek culture. Again, didn't say that. <laughs> um, each one's going to be a different beer and geeky theme. 
Uh, hmm, what are the other ones? The host interviews guests who are experts of, <laughs> or fans of the theme of the week, such as brewers, writers, gamers, musicians, cosplayers, etc. Um, I discuss and share my opinions and experiences on the theme of the week, such as history, culture, trends, trivia, etc. And the host recommends uh, other beers, media, products and events relevant to the theme of the week. So, yeah, aimed at people who share Tori's love for craft beer and geek culture, but also appeals to anyone who likes humour and personality. <laughs> you got a lot of humour and personality. You do. That's okay. When I told Rick this earlier, he said, it's a good thing that it's for people with personality because you have no humour. Oh, he's horrid. <laughs> he went, what you lack funny. for in, he went, what you lack for in humour, you definitely make up for in personality. <laughs> this is why we love our husbands. And I was like... They're not Thanks. afraid to tell us the truth. Thanks, guys. <laughs> um, so my wants example... to know where his Easter eggs are, please. Well, I'm seeing you next weekend, am yes. I not? He can ask me that question after next weekend. You are gonna, you are gonna be the one that has to lug them around London, yes. Yep, yeah. and hope they don't melt. Um, yeah, my example episode is that it's going to be a Japanese video game themed episode. I'm actually into that, so it's suggesting yes, it beer like called Saki Bomb IPA by ninja brewing love it all about that um opens the big is a first impression makes jokes about ninjas and sake bombs i can do that that's easy you do that yeah uh i do a beer review where i describe it i you don't need to go through a description of an ipa again uh and then i compare that to other ipas and sake so that's good i give it a score out of five i then do an interview uh, interview a guest who is a video game journalist and a fan of Japanese video games talk about history, culture and influence of Japanese video games and we talk about our favourite genres, titles, characters developers, etc They also we also play a game where we have to guess oh. the name of a Japanese video game based on the description and sound effect I kind of like that, that's kind of fun <laughs> um, there's I a think discussion better than mine yeah, discussion where we share our opinions and experiences on Japanese video games. I don't know why they've really latched on to Japanese yeah, video really games. I mean, I like video Japanese games. video games, but they've really latched yeah. on to Japan and video games. Um, talk about how I got into them, what I like and dislike, how they differ from Western video games, and some fun, funny, memorable stories and anecdotes related to them. And then, yeah, recommendations for beer and video games and everything else. And then my sign-off catchphrase is, oh, this is Tori's Brews and Views, where I drink craft beer and talk geek stuff. Cheers. <laughs> <laughs> the sign-offs are so terrible. They Why are, are bad, they so terrible? I kind of find these ones endearing, actually. <laughs> it's not podcast land. <laughs> that's true. Um, would you listen to mine? I mean, I know it's not all of it is your bag. but I probably like... would. I mean, I'm your friend. I would definitely listen to your podcast. <laughs> you'd have the guilt you'd wake up in the night with the guilt she has to do will it slush you every week <laughs> it's my fault I'm I'll too to successful <laughs> I'm, I've got too many famous friends now <laughs> I have to listen to will it slushy no, you're so, you're so would you rather listen to will it slushy will it slushy or this episode <laughs> which one would you will it slushy yeah, okay. the ops <laughs> Oh, well, that that's sounds mine. like a bit of you. That really yeah. sounds like you. It's. I feel like I could do that easily. Yeah, I reckon like, you could. Not just not just the Japanese video games. Like that's really yeah. niche. But I feel like I could take that format. I could talk about those things, and I could do that pretty pretty yeah. easily. I'd quite like that. That's good. I reckon you could split that breakdown into like several episodes. though like I feel like it sticks a lot of things together. I think it was just like refine his that. Ideas. Yeah, it's like yeah. throw it at the wall like spaghetti. See what yeah. sticks. I'm like yeah. No, I don't hate it actually. Yeah, I like it. Um, I think to end, I'll give us the a new a woman's brew pitch, if that's right. Oh, please. Okay, you ready? Yeah, I think. I think I'm, you're gonna. I'm, I, I mean, maybe you're really like it. Maybe I'm not, but let's give it a go. I I think you're gonna like it. Okay. That means I'm not gonna like it at all. No, I think you are. Oh, just, God. just wait for it. Come on. Then. The podcast is called A Woman's Brew, a podcast where women talk about beer. <laughs> that's the whole Surprise. thing the whole yeah. name okay uh the hosts are joanne and tori two beer loving women who are on a mission to get more people drinking and talking about great beer right have they literally just taken this from our web page i think they have wow <laughs> the 
podcast format is a mix of beer reviews, interviews, discussions, and recommendations on various topics related to craft beer in the UK. I mean, that's yeah. basically everything. That's what we do. So yeah, that's like what we do. The podcast does everything. Uh, it does indeed. Each episode features a different craft beer and different theme. That's not, okay. not a too hard thing to put in. Yeah. Or any podcast. Each that's, Every yeah. podcast has a different theme every week. Yeah. Um, the host taste and rate the beer of the week and describe its appearance, aroma, flavour, mouthfeel and finish. We kind of do that. We don't really rate it. We don't really rate but it because we like other this... people to have set their own opinions of these things. But we tell you what we think of it and the mm. general characteristics of it. But I also think, you know, this is New World. We could be making this move. <laughs> um, the hosts also interview guests who are involved or interested in the theme of the week such as brewers, writers, educators, activists, etc. I always specifically kept mentioning activists. Okay. And I thought that was really interesting. And that yeah. came up when I asked for women-themed, mm. no, women-hosted topics. It was like, talk about activists and stuff. That's and I was just like, interesting. Yeah. Clearly started learning from what I've been putting in. Yeah. Um, hosts also discuss and share their opinions and experience of the week such as history culture trends etc that's again that's so like open yeah um but here you go the podcast is aimed at women who want to learn more about beer and have fun with it but also appears to anyone who likes humor and personality <laughs> so between the two of us we got humor we and personality so <laughs> we can do that so obviously that, that was good mm-hmm. now for my favorite part can oh, i give you the example of a podcast episode Please. Theme. Women in beer. Oh, surprise. No, no. I mean, <laughs> we're into it, yeah? Yeah, yeah, we're into it. Beer. Boss Lady IPA by Boss Bruin. Oh, no. <laughs> Intro. Oh, God. The hosts introduce themselves on the podcast concept. They explain the theme of the beer of the week. They open the beer, give their first impressions. They make jokes about being boss ladies and drinking boss beers. Oh, God. <laughs> beer review the host tastes and rate the beer they describe appearance golden amber aroma tropical and citrusy flavor hoppy and fruity with a touch of caramel mouthfeel smooth and medium body and finish bitter and dry they compare it to other ipas and beer and they give it a score out of five stars why is it always an ipa i don't know but i will also say I'm putting this out there. I've never had a Boss Brewing beer that had that much flavour and aroma <laughs> to it. I said what I said. She did. She said it. She I said it. There. And I don't take it back because I've had a few that mm-hmm. I've tried over the years to give the benefit of the doubt. And I've just never, it's never got no. it for me, personally. No. People like them. That's fine. Um, we could interview the female brewer and founder of Boss, Boss Brewing, talk about her story challenges achievements and perspective of being a woman in the beer industry and also talk to her about her brewery beers her brewery beers vision values etc and also ask her some questions from the listeners we don't really do like her we're going to we interview really this person that. um something we could do but yeah, i just feel do. like yeah let's know uh, listeners do yeah. you want to give us your questions in advance ahead of interviewing yeah. people yeah we just kind of don't tend yeah sometimes we put interviews together so quick there's just no time yeah and then other times it's like we have so much good stuff to ask already but we could definitely ask what people yeah. want to know um yeah the rest of it's pretty talking about women in beer praise of women in beer female owned blah 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 it's all stuff that we already do yeah uh and our sign off this is a women's brew where women talk about beer cheers it's <laughs> pretty much what we say we just can't say cheers but I think that we should end this episode saying this is a woman's brew where women, women talk, talk about, about cheers. beer. About beer. Cheers. cheers. <laughs> <laughs> That's going to be our sign off. I'm officially mm-hmm. making that our sign off. Okay. <laughs> there we go. <sighs> so that was it. That was that was a f- some only a small fraction of the AI searching that I did. I think I'm I'm um are you feeling so, comfortable with your uh, yeah you know what i'm place in the world? surprisingly pleased with those like when you were talking about it i was like oh no i, I don't know i don't know what this is gonna be like and i think it might be a bit random but actually i quite enjoyed that i thought it was quite good there's some i think there's some good springboarding off points there a bit random it's very random 
I mean, I realise that actually you have, like, sifted through all of this and pulled out the good stuff. No? I didn't sift through that much. No? Oh, okay. <laughs> no, I didn't. So there's, like I said, this is only a small fraction. When I mm. say sh- it's, like, sifted through, I didn't sift through. I just, there's some parts that there was so much of it that mm. I just focused on specific ones. Like, there could be a whole other episode where you talk about more bits of it. I just spent... Okay. We're going to talk about AI generated pubs and puns and poems, talking points, podcast pitch ideas. And then there were some others where it was like a little bit of a grey area between stuff. Mm. And I think we can save that for bonus stuff or future yeah. episodes. But yeah. Glad yeah, you I enjoyed, glad you I enjoyed, enjoyed that. Yeah, I enjoyed that. <laughs> Thank you to yeah. our AI overlords. We Thank really, you. we love you, we respect you. Um, Google, uh, oh God, all of the platforms. <laughs> thank you so much uh, we respect you and just remember that for the <laughs> when future you take power we'll, we, we were there for you we'll be just your boss bitches just stop talking about right podcast hand. land we are not yeah. into podcast land no. that is ooh, that's a beer and loathing rant yeah. um, Joe, if people want to talk to you about they want to see that amazing Joanne's Crafty Corner <laughs> come to life where can they come talk to you about Joanne's Crafty Corner if you want to see Crafty Corner happen or you want to see a beer a, uh, like a beer book club happen you can find me at my beer school which is Love Beer Learning and it is on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter tiktok and pinterest do you know what tiktok banned one of my videos the other day <gasps> what'd you do i don't what know rudeness? what rudeness <laughs> I don't did know. you do it was my um orval day beer like when i was um when i was talking about orval um apparently i uh <laughs> i broke uh, i broke the community guidelines i don't know how <laughs> did it think you said a, a naughty i don't think so potty i think it's word. because there was a beer in it but all of my stuff's got beer in it so i don't know what happened there um so you know i may be on tiktok if they don't censor me which is apparently what they're doing at the moment you're banned um, you're banned, banned. Son. <laughs> don't know I'm waiting for the next one to be banned hey never had that happen in my life um or if you want to see stuff you can come that isn't banned because it is on my actual website lovebeerlearning.co.uk or you can email me lovebeerlearning at gmail.com um, Tori, if people want to hear about your podcast and Will It Slushy can, and suggest <laughs> things that you could slushy for Will It Slushy, where can they get hold of you? If people want to like get on board with Will It Slushy uh, or talk to me about this brilliant podcast idea that, that I've got for myself that I definitely wrote 100% by myself no <laughs> help from AI overlord whatsoever uh, yeah you can find me on Instagram at adventures underscore in underscore optimism or you can email me at adventures and optimism at gmail.com or you can reach out to both of us and talk to us both about a, a beer and book club because like I said we've, we've tossed that idea around we've tossed a few things around mm-hmm. anything that we've tossed around today tour of our glassware or conversations like uh, uh, what's your favourite glass and why and what's the story behind it that's something we could ask our guests that'd be great if yeah. you want to hear stuff like that you can reach out to both of us on Instagram, which we are a women's brew on Instagram, and one of us will get back to you. Or you can email us at a women's brew podcast at gmail.com. So, on that note, this is a woman's brew. This is brew. a woman's brew where women, where women talk, talk about, about beer. beer. Cheers. cheers. I think we just go back to our regular cheers. <laughs> I like this one. This is good. 